I think global inequality is a huge issue, and I think it's a much misunderstood issue. Um, some people consider it a moral issue. I think what we've been able to contribute at the IMF is to view it as an economic issue and to make the point that, and I'd say this is the big idea of the day for me, is that much of what people think about dealing with inequality is wrong. It's based on the wrong theory. Really here in the United States, here in Washington, in the 70s, people observed that um, uh, redistribution hurt growth. It came to be called the leaky bucket theory, that if you're taking money from these people over here and carrying it to these people over here, that the bucket leaks and that the size of the economy is ad adversely affected. And I think as a, that approach, that way of thinking, has colored everyone's views about what to do about inequality, or rather, what not to do. Uh, that, but because they thought there was a trade-off, there was a reluctance. Our research, which is uh, tentative research, but I think it's quite solid research, questions the very foundation of that approach. And it says, it turns out, inequality actually hurts growth. And so if you can uh, find ways to improve the situation and diminish inequality, you may actually find that economies are growing more rapidly. If that turns out to be the case, if our research is substantiated, then I think the approach that people will take to viewing inequality and treating inequality will be different. And we at the IMF feel that we have a lot of experience in this area from our work with countries around the world. We don't want the inequality discussion to mislead us. When people in Ethiopia get jobs, inequality goes up in Ethiopia because everyone's been poor and now some people become a little better off. But inequality between Ethiopians and people in the United States goes down. So we want to make clear that globalization in a global sense is actually good for overcoming inequality, number one. Number two, though, in, in, in countries that are um, uh, looking to uh, address inequality, we feel that we have a lot to say that can be helpful. We're urging countries to uh, develop progressive income taxes, to look at property taxes in their spending policies, to spend more money uh, on health and education, uh, on infrastructure, on social safety nets that will protect people when they're out of, out of work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we've, in a sense, found a new rationale for that uh, by showing that taking these kinds of steps may actually uh, be supportive of their aspirations for growth. Yeah, that's terrific. I think everyone believes that inequality uh, raises risks for political uh, stability. Mm -hmm. I think there's been much less uh, empirical work on that, so it's hard to speak about uh, in, in, a, in a, as, as, as a firm a way as some of the other things that I've uh, been talking about. But, but surely it's uh, a risk, and so when we are discussing the subject with countries, we certainly ask about this, we take this into account. Let me give you, uh, you know, one for instance. Um, it is commonly, we, we've done some work last year that shows that when there are energy subsidies, those can become uh, so large that they undermine uh, a country's um, uh, fiscal sustainability. If they're, say, in Egypt where energy subsidies are 8 or 9 percent of GDP, that's a burden that can't be, can't be managed. But on the other hand, if you, we, we've also found that, oddly enough, most of the subsidies go to people who are not in the bottom quintile or 20 percent of the income distribution, but rather people who are better off. Mm -hmm. And so we, we look at ways in which those uh, subsidy issues can be addressed, um, and we find that uh, countries are actually surprisingly reluctant to design schemes to help the poor when subsidies are removed and allow the burden really to fall appropriately on uh, the, the, the middle class or the, or the more uh, well-to-do. So, you know, we are trying to help countries avoid political instability that comes from sensible reform and, in essence, urging them to use social protection schemes uh, to do that. And we find ourselves uh, in, in the vanguard in that respect. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Uh, I would say the biggest issue for us is whether the global recovery that's underway is going to gather steam and carry the, the global economy out of uh, crisis definitively. And uh, the U.S. is growing. Europe is growing a little more weakly. Uh, emerging market economies, while they provide most of the growth in the global economy, are growing less rapidly than before the crisis. So making sure that there's growth momentum and that all that can be done is done to strengthen growth mm -hmm. is our biggest uh, preoccupation right now.